everybody. Um, it's Thursday and I hope you're all fabulous. I have a lot of creative ideas up my sleeve today, so I hope after this session you are inspired. The techniques I'll be sharing today is lovely um, and also techniques that can be done on canvas, on furniture pieces. Um, I'm going to move between Afrikaans and English to make sure I cater for everybody on the, on the Facebook pages and that everything is clear to everybody. Please ask at any point if anything is unclear and I'll gladly assist and help. <laughs> um, sorry, but it must be here. I think it's only daily. Okay, so we have a victim for today. And my victim for today that I am going to paint is the following. Ta-da! My garbage bin. Um, I've already prepared it in certain steps, so I'll show you exactly how to paint onto plastic, how to prepare and how to do various paint techniques on a surface. My surface is plastic I'm working on today, but it can be anything in your space. From a wall, a furniture piece, um, chest of drawers, a canvas. So sit back, relax, enjoy and be inspired. I just want to make sure that the sound is fine, that everybody can hear me. This is a DIY home session, so nothing fancy. Um, we're doing our best to make sure that everybody understands, everybody hears. So just make sure that your volume is turned up. Um, then also let us know if sound is fine and also let us know at any point if anything is unclear. Jaku, can you see the questions? There's no questions yet. Okay. Jaku is our video man for the day. It's our son that turned 18 yesterday. So um, congratulations, Jaku. It's, he is a lovely person. I hope that you all one day get the, the privilege of meeting Jaku. He's lovely and I'm such a proud mother to have a teenager like Yaku in my house. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. Are the people there? Can you see? Yes. People? Okay. So the first step when working on plastic is to make sure, you can just focus on the garbage from Yaku, is to make sure that you use a hundred grit piece of sandpaper and that you um, I'm just going to call Kelly that she can call Maestro because he is eating his study on my spot sheet. Um, <laughs> just give me a second, mm -hmm. Kelly. Kelly. So that's the Maestro and the Maestro. Hi. Hi. Okay, so the first, I just want to get the destroyer out of my. <laughs> The sabotage out of my way. So the first step is a hundred grit piece of sandpaper. And what we're going to do on our plastic surface, and sorry for the sound, we are going to sand. Make sure that plastic is rough. Many plastic surfaces do have an oily coating. And we do want to remove the oiliness by sanding first and then lacquer thinner. So just see what I'm doing so that the process makes sense. Okay, so I'm making sure that it's rough. And that any oiliness is removed. You can spend more time on this process. This is actually key together with the cleaning with the lack of thinness. So next step, and I'm going to fake this step, else I won't be able to paint and show, um, is to use power fixes lacquer thinners. I know I've mentioned so many things before. Um, bear with me, there are a lot of new um, 
attendees on our Facebook page. Welcome to all the family members. I hope you are so inspired to create something beautiful in your own space. So what I do is I break power fix so like a finish. Mark seeker your gebruik aans doen. Masker, en dat al bent de laatste in je spasie is, wanneer jy dit gebruik. Mask, gloves, ventilation in your space when working with a lack of fitness. Um, I'm going to fake this step, but I want you to see it. So you thoroughly wet your cloth with lack of fitness. I'm not wearing a glove, but I'm not actually going to do it. So I just want you to see. So you make sure your cloth is nice and wet with a lack of fitness. And then you wipe your surface clean. Vraag niet vir hulle of kan net een van hulle net de vraag gestuur of hulle, want ek denk jy, ek sien net wie kyk, ek sien nie vraag of... Can someone just send us a message? Pa, stuur sommer een message, ek kan sien pa kyk. Oké, ja, kan send us a message so that we can see if we receive the notifications, please? Is anything happening, ja, kan? Mm-mm, dat het ook net die babbel ding druk. Wacht, ek weet nie wat hierdie is, nie? Do you receive the notification? Yeah. Kylie? 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 Okay, so we'll see now if there are any questions yet. Katie is coming to assist. You take your lack of fitness and you wipe clean. Well, I'm just going to do that section. But this is a very important step. In anything that you paint, from laminated kitchen cupboard doors, built-in units, um, built-in cupboards, wardrobes, anything that has a smooth finish, wall tiles, your um, melamine kitchen cover doors. So if at any point the cleaning process wasn't done properly, there might be a chance that chalk will won't completely grip to your surface. Because what happens? The thinness etches the surface so that chalk can grip. It's not necessary to clean with thinness when painting onto fabric though. That's the time or canvas, not necessary. Okay. But any other surface, if you have a problem with a grip, make sure you've cleaned properly. Also, if you paint and you see, oh, the paint is scratching off, just clean that section again. It might be that there's oiliness still underneath that hasn't been removed completely. Clean again. The thinness makes everything nice and smooth. Allow your 20 to 40 minutes dry time and just paint onto those sections again. Thanks, Gaby. Is the notification there? Not working today. It might be a Facebook glitch. We are so sorry. Um, but we can't see your questions. And there's a What the city? It happens to us once before. Okay, but afterwards I'll go through all the questions and I'll gladly assist. <laughs> Now you know why we can't put my show in the room. Yeah. Okay, so mm. the cleaning part, very important process. Now I'm going to allow mm. my surface to dry um, 20 to 40 minutes and I'm going to start to paint. So very important when painting is to first do your cut lines. So my foam roller won't easily reach there. I'm using the colour Don's wash on my garbage bin. So I snij eerst, doen eerst my snijlijne. Met de kwast, I'm using Hamilton's Enzyme Brush. And Hamilton's Enzyme Brush, it's a lovely paintbrush to work with. So I'm doing my cut lines on the plastic. So your first coat is always the foundation for everything that you are going to paint on top. This is also my colour, my main colour for my dustbin. I don't need to apply an a, a undercoat. I'm just going to paint. And have fun. 
that's the great thing about babies. Anything and everything can be fixed. Never do you need to feel anxious. It is faint. So relax. There's no reason why you should feel anxious or uncertain. And the more you do something, the more confidence you gain. So just do it. So I'm making sure that I'm applying even strokes, all the edges, and now I'm going to work with a foam roller to do all the flat surface on the inside, or you can just work with a paintbrush and apply your first coat with the paintbrush, whatever makes you happy. So let's do that section like that. Now I'm going to decant some paint in a, in a paint tray and a foam roller. I know we have shown many times how to work with a foam roller. This is also just to re-emphasize the steps. So generous amount of paint on your foam roller, evenly distribute it. What the foam roller does, it distributes air onto your painted surface. So you will see air bubbles appear on where you've painted. That is quite normal. Don't overwork your foam roller and also don't work where the paint is starting to dry already because that will create roughness. And as we've mentioned last week, then you just take once the paint is completely dry, a scotch pad, those green sponges that we use in our kitchens, and you even it out. And I'm now going to work with a foam roller. Make sure when you work with a foam roller that you don't work in an area where there is a breeze. So that these air bubbles can pop quite naturally on their own time. But I'm going to smooth it out, make sure it's nice and even. And then wait for my first coat to dry before I start the application of my second coat. Very important tip. Always wait for paint coats to dry before applying the next. Let's just make this nice and smooth. So I'm working with both a paint brush and a foam roller to apply a nice and even first base coat. And this is a gentle application I've said so many times, don't do it with aggression, because that's the times when you will see roughness on your surface. Yes, I wonder what she read that the frown was. It might be a Facebook glitch, because it has happened before. We are so sorry. I will attend to questions afterwards, so ask them. I hope that they are available on the page afterwards and then I'll just attend to it. So I'm working at an angle, but this is my first coat. The air bubbles do disappear. Yeah, but it's also every time when you handle them. Mm. <laughs> the foam that we can't see notifications. Mm. Maybe you have a special mm -mm. trick for your face. Okay, this is my first coat. What will happen next? I'll wait for my first coat to dry completely, then apply my second coat. Some tips. Um, we have, for instance, the paint pigments, color pigments in white, yellows, reds, and very bright colors are weaker than pastel colors. So you do need to apply more than two coats with those, with those colors. Something that I've done that's a nice tip to remember. When working with yellows or reds, because we know the pigments are so weak, and even white, first paint, especially when you work, move from a very dark surface, like dark mahogany wood, or um, this is now a very sensitive space, but we are a paint group. We are busy making things beautiful in our space, and it's paint, ladies. Whenever you want to get rid of the paint, we just sand it off again. So um, please be sensitive to those ones that do want to paint something. 
okay we we are creative and we make ourselves happy with paint colors and things we have in our own spaces so if you want to change something from a very dark surface to a white surface a yellow surface or a red surface I've done it this week. I first painted a base coat in a light grey, like stone wash. That was my first colour. And then applied my yellow or my red or my white on top of that. And then it's easier to work from a very dark surface to a white, a yellow or a red. Because we know the pigments on those colours are weaker. Okay. So once this is dry, I'll apply my second coat. I'm not going to do it now because the application will remain exactly the same. I'm going to move my dustbin. Yep, you can just sit like that. I'm just going to move my dustbin this way so that we can start the washing process. And now remember what I've said earlier. It is a technique that you can do of a canvas, of a mere, of a meable stick, a light dust. We have all of the flores done. Maar ons krijgt een schrikkelijk paar vraag van hoe. Hoe krijg je een verouderde gevoel op een groot plat oppervlak? So instead of creating a very antique look with antique lace on a large flat surface, I like to use various chalk or colors to create that look. So I'm just moving things closer. Yep, you just remain in your position. I'm having a bucket with some matting cloth. And I'm going to use various chalk of colors. Um, let's add some Fricks Forest, some Don's Wash. Always when you wash, you also have your base color as a lifesaver available. So at any point we, when you want to change something, we use our base coat again over the surface to hide any flaws i'll show you so here is my palette my wash palette it's dawn's wash frex forest and um, comforts blue sheriff stone and cloud white and this you you decide depending on your preference the look the color scheme in your room, what your colors will be. Now I use mutton cloth, more or less cut to the size of a kitchen drying towel. It's damp, okay. I start, I'm going to start with Fritz Forest. So two fingers full of paint, and it's Fritz Forest. And I blend it into my cloth. And it can be more than two fingers. Remember, this is just a guideline. You will find a way or a technique or something that works better for you. And go for it. I'm just inspiring. So nothing I say is cast in stone. Remember that. Okay, so I make a lacquer the first. So I make a lot of my love for you. Good fact. This is precies what I do. In Achenama Oppervlak was make my foil black. So very light movements. Um, let's start here with the light is better. And you can see what I'm doing. Soft pressure. So I make sure I fold my cloth like a ball. All the hands are, are facing my hand palm. So they don't touch the surface and that the frills of the cloth can't get onto my surface. And I hold it gently, like a fake cookie, in the palm of my hand, like a ball. I press it flat with my free hand, and very gently, I move on my painted dry surface. So just allow for your final coat to dry for at least an hour before you start washing. Some instances it can be shorter, Shorter waiting period. Okay, and I'm washing. This is the wet side still. And now, just everywhere, 
I hope you can see clearly. Yeah, but can you see clearly on your screen what's happening? Yes. Okay. You don't need to move closer. Um, I can zoom, but I, I can prop, I can see. Yeah. Okay. Looks good. So I'm just going to do a dog so that you can see <laughs> what's happening. So if you want to create this look, an ombre look, you will start at the bottom. It's something we're going to do in Danny House room. She doesn't know yet. But it's definitely something we're going to do in a room. She definitely knows now. Okay. <laughs> we're going to start at the bottom with different blues, because she loves blue. Danny's dead is named after her. And go lighter all the way up. Um, so it's something we are busy with. I, I actually day. have an idea. Maybe I should log into Facebook using my phone, then I can see the questions on my phone. That's maybe not a bad idea. I'll position it in such a way so that everybody can still see. Okay, give it to me. And then I'll continue to wash. Okay, so I hope you can see Yaku's going to log onto Facebook on his phone and then at least we can see what the questions are. Okay, so I have washed with my first color. I must be honest with you, this is one of my most favorite techniques. Yaku, your phone is there on the counter. And now I'm going to move to my next color. Okay, so I'm going to dampen my cloth a bit because it has dried. Dampen it, or you can use a different cloth. You can even have a cloth for each color available. And I'm now going to use the color, let's see what is here. Let's use Comfort's Blue. So once again, two fingers full, on my cloth, I distribute it nicely, evenly, with one hand. Um, if, if anybody needed proof that a woman can multitask, this is living proof. Okay, I'm holding a camera, I'm washing my cloth, I'm mixing my cloth with a paint colour called Comfort's Blue. I'm going to hold my cloth in the palm of my hand. Okay, so Leaky is answering, so we shouldn't worry. Thanks, Lee. Thank you, Leaky. Okay, and on top of my Fritz Forest, I'm now moving with my Comfort's Blue all the way down. So I'm creating a mottled wash effect. circular motion and I just quickly want to show you if you want to hide anything so I'm going around here making sure that everything is neat so when you want an antique look on a large flat surface uh, instead of using share, um, antique brown blades I use share of stone or Aldous mix or a combination of the two to create an antique finish um, instead of antique glaze on large flat surfaces. So think for instance a chest of drawers. If you want to create an antique look on that, you use share of stone and Aldous mix and you wash the way I'm doing now. I'll just make sure that everything is neat afterwards and I'll do first the, the final. Okay, what I'm doing next is I'm going to incorporate a lighter colour. At any point, if you feel that something that you have painted is very dull, I should forget it's a fact that it is doet, that it leven nodig. Sit in lichte kleur by, want licht reflecteer licht, en lichte kleur reflecteer licht, in dadelijk sal het voel as het die oppervlak meer lewe het. So I'm using cloud white. A 
Okay, don't worry. We're all gonna focus. I'm focusing on you as well. Light colour being added. Gun Can you see how everything is receiving some light? Yep. Okay, here is the area where I will still play. Very important now is wait for that area to dry and then we'll wash on top of that again. Okay, now what I mentioned earlier about your first color, your base color, if you want to hide any imperfections, important for that to first dry before you start washing again, is use your first color, it's dance wash that I have used. So I can hear the dance wash gebruik. I can buy the number of his bus, but I feel dark is with this and then through the board. And if this again gets a skate, you can get a up here. Um, and then you wash with your dance wash, your first color, and you hide any imperfections that way. Okay, next. Oh, I can't wait to show you this part. Is this is going to dry now? Well, I'm talking about the just remain there. Look! At these lovely stencils, we are going to add to our range. Now, everything at Choco happens very quickly and many times at the spur of the moment. So, it's not on our catalog yet. It will be very soon, but this is a teaser. So, as you can see, there's a windmill, but only a section of it. And this is a section of a putia. How beautiful is this? How beautiful is this? Yeah. And how beautiful is this? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do my putia on this side. Is it dark and thick? No, you just remove it. Don't do it. What's it? So I'm going to stencil my putia on here. Okay, I'm going to re emphasize the stencil, stencil tips, because it's questions we do often receive. So I'm going to make use of, move closer here because the sound is, is not lacking. I'm going to use masking tape. Make sure before you mask on something that the paint had a curing time of at least 24 hours. Okay, else the masking tape will rip the paint from your surface or if you haven't cleaned properly. That's also the time, if you have waited long enough, that the masking tape will remove paint um, from the painted surface. So secure your stencil with masking tape. I still prefer to use masking tape instead of stencil glues. Purely because the masking tape do not leave a residue behind. Some, some stencil glues leave a stickiness behind on your painted surface um, where the masking tape does it. Okay, so I have, I'm going to secure it here. My paint is still wet. Masking tape is stubborn to stick. Give me one second. I'm just going to cut something in there like a loop. But the stencil is more flat. This is not damaging my stencil. It's just making my life easier.
Oké, okay, hier is een vraag. Ik kan die vraag zien. Liki, ik heb erom uitgefigurd hoor. Nee, op je. Ik heb mijn voeten nou hier zo. So, 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 En wanneer daar weer wijn beschikbaar is, gooi je jou glas die wijn en jij verdwaal. En jij gaat ontspannen met een lekker warm bad. Ze so water is zeer, mag je aan de spoor. Nog een vraag, Jacob? Um. Wonderlijk dat je die vraag kan zien, Jacob. Ik heb ja. het vanaf laat. Oké. Ik heb het ek het actually Facebook gehad, maar ik heb het lied. Um. Nou, wat gebruik je jong mensen, ja? Ik, ik gebruik niet raarig sociale media nie. Ja. Kijk. Um. What I'm going to use as a base for my stencil pattern is matte black. So I just want to see that it's nice and flat. Isn't that a beautiful stencil? Can you imagine this on a canvas? And I'm going to share some creative ideas how to do blending. So this will be beautiful. Oh, can you imagine? On a chest of drawers, if you just had this put here on the one side. Okay, I'm inspired. I just now need to find a chest of drawers that, that can be painted. For can I get stencil, cry as a belief? Okay, so very important is the stencil is not launched yet. I'm inspiring. Request from your nearest stockist. We'll make, we'll make a plan to get it. Um, or send an email to myself, Regina, chocolate paint, and I'll assist. Okay. So, can you use stencils, Mark? What do you use? Um, we cut on bulk. Um, so, we manufacture bulk stencils. We have a dedicated person that supplies us with stencils. So, that's part of our business. Okay, so for stenciling, um, especially on this large surface, I'm using a foam roller and I'm making sure that the paint, because I'm working on a large area, a stencil brush would take me forever to stencil that prettier. So I'm going to use a foam roller. Mooi, so vrou wat, sorry, ek weet die, die, daar is a lag tussen die live video en die my phone, dit is a feit. Um, daar is een mens wat zelfs gesê het, hulle het water en seep probeer en olie, hulle kry nie die freaking glaas van hun handen af nie. Ok, glaas, you get glaas off your hands, where you can wear a glove, I still take a warm, warm bath. With soap and water, um, drink coffee while you bath, but if you prefer, you can wear gloves, or immediately, after you've used the glaas, it's latex, it's 100% latex. Just wash your hands in water and soap. Okay, that will remove the, the glaze, I promise. Okay, so I'm distributing the paint evenly in my foam roller. So there's no blocks of paint in my foam roller and it's actually dry, it's not too wet. Now my initial touch on my surface is very gentle and soft so that I can make sure that no paint leaks underneath my stencil. But less paint is, is key to success. So I'm just going to roll it out. Newspaper also works well. And you can also, if you just want to stencil, today I'm going to show a blending technique. But if you just want to stencil, you can use various colors. Where I'm now just using black, you can go with blue, you can go with different shades of blue, you can go, because it's a prettier, with different shades of pinks as well. This is my base coat, because I'm, I have a plan. Okay, come on, say, I don't know if it's a dark stencil. What is your voorstel as as a uh, uh, underlaag? For an underlaag, before I can stencil. So, the vrou, so the stein, no, stein out, it's a dark. And she wants to stencil. Zij vrouw, wat gaan zij als onderlaag gebruiken? Ik use Dan's Wash, gebruik Dan's Wash. Oké. Okay. Dit is wel meer die aanslag aanvankelijk begin te Oké. So dit is een mooi basis laten te gebruiken. Awesome. Zo 
all the moon is also nice. Actually, you can do anything. There aren't, there aren't rules. Just clean properly with lacquer thinners. That's the main key so the body can grow. So, the third deal of the schools is that you bow a verschillende richtings can beweeg. Dat was een onder in, want ik druk niet vast niet, maar als ik niet op dat. En ik werk hier tegen een hoek. Ze wees het met mijn geduldig, ik moet die afspraak niet eens kijken. <laughs> okay, this does not need to be perfect because it's actually tracing lines for me to fill mm. in color. So I'm just creating a background for anything that needs to happen on top. Von Queenstown can you have one like a product could possibly So as you open the bed, you can use pink on stockers, which is where an option where you can use your environment. You click on search and you move up on the bed. And then you can use all the other lights in the bed. There's no other lights in your environment, it's not just like a line of vocal on the same bed. Okay, and just for future reference, um, the stencil is reusable. And just tell them a little bit about that, Mom. Okay, so the stencil is reusable. Oh, of course, I have a whole pile of stencils. <laughs> so you can, it's actually not even necessary to wash this afterwards, but I do have clients that prefer um, to keep their stencils nice and clean. I use a scotch pad that you use in your kitchen, and just in a bath will work well. Immediately, you can put it in water. And then you can clean it if the paint won't do any harm on this stencil. So, yeah, if you want to clean it, that's the way, or you don't. On finer detail, I would always recommend to clean your stencil, else the paint becomes so thick on your stencil that eventually it um, closes the it closes the gaps, so you can't see the patterns anymore. But this is a nice big stencil. You are going to understand what I'm going to do, and um, if I reveal. The other side of my dustbin, but I'm now going to remove my stencil. So I just saw a question. So glaze um, do doesn't necessarily protect it, but it does make it UV and water resistant. So then when you paint, um, it's normally used in bathrooms and then outside. Is there a question? Yes, they said, um, so glaze... I can it nog over nacht. So it protects the furniture objects. Is it permanent, especially for a surface that's used constantly? Yeah, so the glaze is a pure acrylic sealant. It's very hard wearing. It's like a coat of latex that you apply to your surface. So it offers protection. It makes it more stain resistant so that you can clean with a damp cloth once you have painted and you want to wash your surface clean. Choco has a building sealant. But if you want to make the surface more, more washable, wearable, UV and water resistant, the dust and I would glaze. I would also not, after all this effort, let my dust bin um, go on the us lorry. I'll rather use this for a, a recyclable items, like put all the glass in here and make sure that my dust bins are beautiful for all the recyclables um, standing, standing just outside my kitchen. Ik wil zeggen wat, uh, wat sê, um, maar verf alles wat voor me staan. Ik zeg, ja, nee, kijk, als ik stil staan, wordt ik ook geverf. Ja, dat. Dus dit is nu mijn basecoat. En dit is mijn kutia. Nu ga ik het start blending aan. Dus daar, ik denk, die rolt onderneath. Maar ik kan gewoon een artist brush en gewoon vul dat lijn. Dus er zijn altijd ways van fixen. Gewoon zorg dat je stencil, om te gebruiken, 
dry foam roller or a dry stencil brush and rather apply two coats. I've only applied one coat. So if I wanted this to stay stenciled and not blend as I'm going to do now, I could just as well um, apply a second coat once my first coat was dry. But even this is so beautiful. Can you see it, Yaku? I can see it. It's oh, awesome. Yeah. Now, let's, you're just going to sit. Yeah, I know. I'm just moving back. Let's Get a full view. The rest. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't go and exercise today because I just found out when I came home from my grandparents that I need to film a choco, <laughs> a choco live. Okay, uh, what is the type of quest to use? Because as I verf, maak my glass wacht and disappear. Maak my glass strepe. Is there different quest for different oppervlaktes? Okay, so if you paint your first coat, I like to, when working on glass or very smooth surfaces, I like to work with the Hamilton's enzyme brush. So the enzyme brush is the one that I've used earlier and it has very soft bristles. And here it is. This is what it looks like. Okay, so very soft bristles. Your first coat will be stripy, it won't be perfect because it's the first, first layer of paint. So, eerst the laagie, ga nie perfect wees. Die tweede laagie. Kan jy hier jou jou enzyme gebruik? En wat jy met 'n baie glad oppervlak is, maak ek soos doen soos wat ek gemaak het met my asblik. Ek verf om seker te maak al die snylyne is bedek, oor as die baie roller nie kan raak nie. En dan rol jy mooi tussen in met jou sponsroller. 'n sponsroller gee 'n baie gladde eenvoudige afwerking, mits jy nie te veel rol nie. So met 'n sponsroller maak jy seker geen agressie nie, ligte bewegings en baie verf met jou sponsroller, sodat jy dit mooi eenvoudig kan verspry moet nie iets los los wat jy besig is terwyl jy rol. Maak jou oppervlak klaar met jou sponsroller. Maak seker is mooi eenvoudig. Jy kan 'n rigting verander as jy met 'n sponsroller werk en dan het jy baie mooi eenvoudige afwerking. Of jy kan kwas vat, verf en terwyl die verf nog nat is, net met jou sponsroller die lugies gaan rol en dan kry jy baie gladde afwerking. Goed. Kom ons gaan eers aan jou dat ons nou weer vrae beaan. Okay. I'm going to fill in the gaps. Okay. So what I do is I'm going to blend, but I first paint myself a base coat. And I'm using Armour's Aubergine. You can have any color wind mold that you prefer. Can I ask you a question? First, Kylie wrote more whisk in the exam. This is why she doesn't do this video. En dan is hier een vrouw wat vraagt als hij die binnen die er verf, al binnen die er verf, moet zij glaas gebruiken? Dat is niet nodig. Als het binnen die er is, hij is niet blootgesteld aan huwen niet. Hij is niet blootgesteld aan water niet. Kan je dat eigenlijk al met die er geplaatst tijdens die grendeltijd? Hij is nog nooit geglaas niet. Hij is nog niet zo vracht dat hij spaat kan met die er. En naar die gasten toe in deze niet wat stuur is niet. Is gechoko nog nooit kans gekrijgd te glijden, so dit is nie nodig nie. As jy sien, merk het is vir jou issue. Want op dan jou choko, as hy nie glijds op het nie, is dit een mat afwerking, so dove afwerking. En soos enige meer verf, wat ook een dove afwerking is, laat ek net verf, terwyl ek die vraag beantwoord, soos enige meer verf, wat ook dof is, is dit geneig om meer stof en merke achter te laat. En dan kan jy met choko, al is daar nie glijds op nie, kan jy eenvoudig net gaan aan een natlap van soos wat ek met verf, en my verf die nie af nie, kan jy die verf gemoof, en jy vee net skoon. En nou het jy na my eerkomers toe bewys, hulle was ook plastiek, en ek het hulle verskillende groenskakerings geverf. 
nog nie kans gekryg te kluis nie. Gister was met Jakkie se verjaardag het ons so 'n pizza gekry en aan my ouers gesê van Kava, my boetie, hulle moet 'n baba sien. <laughs> hy is die 21ste gebore, sy naam is Tinus. Hy het 3.12 seslik geboorte gewees en hy is pragtig. So my ouers het gekom van die Kava vir Jakkie se 18e verjaardag had ek die geboorte van ons sientjie in die familie. Allemaal die pizza geëet, Petra gehande aan die stoele gevat, ek het vir oogend net alles skoor gegeen. Goed nog nie gekluid, so jy hoef nie. Dit is die korte lang van jou bier. So I am painting my first um, coat in almost aubergine. And now, while the paint is still wet, and I'm just using a cloth, but I'm rather going to use a dry cloth, to just clean my paintbrush. You don't need millions of brushes. I'm using a very soft bristles artist brush. You get them from p &A. This one says Prime Art Bianco. This is the one I'm using. Oh, die lig is slag. Okay, Prime Art Bianco, and the size is a size 16. And I'm cleaning my artist brush with a dry cloth. And I'm going to dip it in my next color and I'm blending. So while my almond aubergine is still wet, I'm adding something. You still see where the light's lacking? Yeah, perfect. It's like I look more. I'm cleaning. I'm adding the dance wash and both paint colors are wet. So can you see how nicely it blends together? And that's the key with blending. Both paint colors that you want to blend into each other needs to be wet. I'm going to add some Simon Says here in the corner. So I'm just, if I feel my brush is too wet, I'm just so, I can hear you in the So, I'll ask you if you can clear glass or normal verf. Because the thing is, um, one verf is not a wide spectrum. The thing is, glass is water basis. So, you can not have glass or an oily basis verf. Gaan verf nie, want obviously gaan het afkom, water en olie mix nie. So, verf het maar op enige waters, waterbasis verf behoor dit te werk. Is ek graag? Dankie. So, waterbasis producte word van het waterbasis gebruik en oliebasis van het oliebasis. Okay, we would also never recommend to apply a varnish, a oil based mm. varnish on top of chalk. Because chalk is water based. Okay, and I'm just playing. And I'm adding some lighter green, some white. And maybe some lights here. And this was our crinkle stencil that now looks different. It has some color and it looks authentic. And it looks like an art piece, and you don't need to be an artist. That's the fun thing. Anyone can do this. Just be playful. Don't be afraid to attempt something. Choco is paint, and with choco, anything can be fixed. The fact that all our products are water based the paint, the glaze, the stencil of Paris. If at a point you glaze, and I'm going to glaze now, and I'm going to give a hint a nice tip for glazing. If you want to glaze something, and or you have glazed a surface, and now you want to change color, or you realize, oh, I want to add a stencil on top of my surface, just do it. The two most important steps when you're working with chalk, and the only two rules, is make sure the surface you're working on is grease-free, oil-free, mold-free, by cleaning it well with lacquer thinners. That's the very first important step. Plastic, wax surfaces, and enamel surfaces rather sand first, create a roughness, then clean with lacquer thinners, and then start painting. That's the one rule, oil-free surface. The second rule is 
wait long enough before you apply that clear glass. We recommend four hours, but in really cold weather like we have experienced the past few weeks, wait overnight and only glaze the next day. Other than that, that there aren't any rules and that's the amazing thing about charcoal is your imagination and, cre can, and creativity can go wild. Um, I'm just going to add some more light here. And now you can play. I hope the blending process makes sense. And I'm just going to repeat myself. Make sure both paint colours are wet and then just blend. And now you can build on top of this. There's no point where you need to stop unless you feel it's perfect. But you can build and play until you're happy. Now let's do the glazing up and you can just remain like Yeah, I can not go to each So... So, um, there's someone who asked, like, if you spill oil on a charcoal surface, will it make a stain? Well, this is the thing. It's still water-based, and you're using oil. So, just wipe the oil with water afterwards, water and soap, and it won't leave a stain at all. I I it, but that more buy it more. Yeah, yeah. See yeah. Okay. Will Ja. Nee, trust me, jelle dit werk. Ons het dan met ons oliefanger is ons dier hier die frikken stoelen. Okay. Ja. So Ek denk is... Nee, ja, ik moet net een beetje langs draai stellen. Oké, okay. oh, sorry jelle. I'm going to place this separate oog en dat speelt dit. So, what you can do if you want to, yeah, you just remain like this. If you want to re-emphasize, if you feel that you've covered too much of your black lines, you can reapply your stencil and just roll again to bring out the black lines again. Okay, that's yeah. something that you can do afterwards. I'm going to show you a trick that I um, discovered when helping Anneli Slabbit with her kitchen. So, mixing the glaze is three parts glaze, one part water. Okay, so I'm, I'm adding my one part water and then three parts glaze. Something that I also realized quite recently is on darker surfaces, like your matte black, your um, Danny's Day, which is really dark. Add equal quantities paint and glaze, and then the white lines won't occur. The white lines will also not occur if your cloth is damp oh, enough if you work with it. Paint and oh, sorry. Equal quantities glaze and water. Sorry. So when glazing dark surfaces like matte black, shared stone, Danny stair, true blue, mix equal quantities glaze and water and then apply the glaze. The glaze is a pure acrylic sealant. So it ha is very hard wearing. We are diluting it with 30% water, which means it still has an acrylic component of 70%. Where room paints have an acrylic component of 50%. So we really apply a good quality sealant on our surface. Okay, so still by diluting it half water, half glaze, um, you have a very good quality sealant. Okay, I'm going to show you now what Anneli has taught me. And that's why I say, um, I don't know everything. I also learn as we go, and that's the marvelous thing. She uses a microfiber cloth to do her glaze application. So this is what I am going to use. Okay, Yaku, this is actually part of your birthday gift. Yeah, no, I've seen this in my, this is my, for my, this, this for my car, though. <laughs> okay, so I am going to be inherited his grandfather's car. <laughs> I'm going to dip my microfiber cloth in water, make sure it's nice and damp, not soggy, but it's really wet, more wet than dry. The wetness of the cloth allows the glaze to evenly spread on your surface. Now I'm mixing wet gloves, those that have difficulty cleaning their hands, 
Um, please wear gloves, okay? Wash your hands immediately after you've placed. It's not toxic, so it won't harm you, but it will make life easier to clean yourself. Okay, and then, so it's damp. I know it has absorbed the glaze and water mixed everywhere. It's more damp than dry, so that I can manipulate it and evenly spread it on my surface. I must just not spread it where I've just placed it. So, it also says it on the instructions of the glaze, wait at least four hours before you glaze. I prefer to wait overnight, okay, or longer. And now, you work in a well-lit space. So, I make sure as I apply my glaze, and you can do it in circle movements, you can do it up and down, but I can see exactly where I've touched with my glaze at the microfiber cloth works a ball. It works so easy. It doesn't need frills as some matte cloths does. Um, I've, be, I've worked with matte cloths that are horrible to use and you actually get frustrated because it leaves frilly piece on your surface. And I just want. Ma, hierdie mense wil net sien hoe like ek. Ek ga net vanag hierdie camera omdraai. Ok, dis hoe jakkie like. Hallo jylle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not going to wipe there because that is still wet, but it leaves a beautiful, very durable, stylish finish on your painted surface. It just brings everything to life. And microfiber is our new answer. I'm so glad for lockdown because I would never have tried this myself. And it really solves. The problem of frills and unevenness. Okay. And that is me for today. I hope you is inspired. I hope you all are kunstenaars bezig in your own omgevings. And that all in your life is new clear and new in your work. I see you the following Donnerdag, half tight, half the plek, half the tight. And you know what you will see. Um, Ek het die beer so dag jylle, inspiratie, Steve, Steve, dankie vir al die wonderlijke inspiraties op ons Choco Creations Facebook plaat, jylle is een klomp amazing mense, moet die kwaai wees met die wat hulle goed wil vergen jylle, ons skeer jy af, as ons moe gestaf voor, liefde en baie.